wanted to do a teaching video on the endocrine and nervous uh, system response to stress. Uh, lots of questions on this type of stuff, so we thought it'd be beneficial to have a teaching video on this. So uh, what we're looking at, of course, when we're talking about the stress fight or flight response is we're looking at the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, if you looked at your notes, are broken up into kind of two glands in itself, right? We have a left and right, but we also have within a adrenal gland, we have an adrenal medulla, and then we have the adrenal cortex, which is the outer layer. Now the medulla sounds like middle, they both start with M, and that's how you remember that we're talking about the middle portion of the adrenal gland. Now, one of them, of course, we know there is a long-term stress response to stress for dealing with stress over the long term. Uh, and then the other one, of course, is a short-term response, something that happens instantaneously. You walk around a corner when you're hiking and there's a grizzly bear, man, right in a split second, all of a sudden your heart rate and all these different type of physiological uh, responses occur to that stress very, very quickly. So that's a short-term, but it, again, short-term response to uh, stress, but not over the long period of time. So when we take a look at this, let's go through this really quickly. Uh, we have the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus sends a nerve response directly to the medulla, okay? So we're talking about directly to the medulla. And that is a sympathetic nerve. So this response, of course, would be the short-term nervous response to stress. Okay, so the medulla, we know what happens, sympathetic nerve, medulla. The medulla is then going to release, we said, uh, epinephrine. And the other thing that has the same effect is norepinephrine. You're going to see a question coming up with that. So epinephrine or norepinephrine. And this is uh, aka, I guess, equivalent to adrenaline. And this causes all sorts of different type of physiological responses. So just a couple of them really quickly. Increase heart rate, uh, breathing rate, uh, increase blood pressure. breathing rate and blood pressure. And this is the other big one here as well. And you'll see questions on this one as well. But we're gonna get an increased conversion of glycogen in the liver and in the muscles. That's gonna get converted into excess glucose. So again, you get that surge of energy, right? Uh, you can run faster, you can you're much stronger when you're in fight and flight. And part of the reason for that is because you have all this excess glucose as energy. Okay. So that again is the short term response, the nervous response to stress. But we also have the cortex involved in here. So you get, you walk around the corner, grizzly bear, but I mean, this thing's chasing you for a long time. So you have to have a longer term kind of uh, response to stress as well. And this one is uh, the hypothalamus as well, hypothalamus, okay? But this one is the long-term response. So the long-term endocrine response to stress, okay? So in this particular mechanism, we know that it's going to send a releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary that's going to release ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. So this is going to target through the bloodstream, takes a while to get there, to the cortex. Okay? And we know, and I'm just going to write this over here just so I have a little bit more room. Here's the cortex now, the outer portion of the adrenal gland. It's going to release two things, okay? One of them is, just in the name right here, cortisol. Okay, and cortisol, what it's going to do, it's going to kind of break down proteins and convert them into 
amino acids. I'll just abbreviate it, AA. So you're going to have an increased amount of amino acids. Those amino acids are then going to get converted into glucose. So we have excess glucose. So same reason, right? We've talked about that here with epinephrine, right? Increasing the conversion at the liver and the muscle cells. Glycogen, uh, uh, glycogen storage, it converts them back into glucose. So we have a increase in energy. And you need that when you're in fight and flight. Same thing over here. So we start taking some of those amino acids. It also actually converts some fats into glucose as well. Uh, but certainly for the test, you want to remember about the breaking down of proteins leads to increased amino acids, uh, which then get converted into increased glucose, and that also increases energy levels. So there's multiple ways that we get excess glucose. One is cortisol, one is uh, epinephrine. Okay, and the other one that it releases, we want to deliver this glucose and oxygen faster in times of fight or flight. So the other one we have to do is we have to increase our blood pressure over the long term. And that would be aldosterone. Now this one is going to target the kidney. Don't get this mixed up with ADH because this one does kind of have the same effect. But this one is going to increase Na, sodium reabsorption. And when you take more sodium out of the kidney, the nephron specifically, what happens is water follows and an indirect response is more water is going to be reabsorbed as well. So this one though deals with sodium. So don't get that mixed up with ADH. That kind of has a very similar effect, but in this case, aldosterone is using sodium, which water then follows. Okay, and that leads to more water in the blood, which then increases blood pressure, right? The more fluid that you have in the blood, it increases the pressure. And what is the purpose of that? That, of course, we said is to deliver, right? We want to deliver glucose and oxygen faster in times of stress. Okay, so uh, difficult concepts, again, two different systems uh, that are incorporated in to deal with fight and flight. Uh, if you have any issues with that, give me an email and we can go over some of this again. Okay, thanks.